All right, we're recording. Well, I'd like to um, welcome all of you to the city and county CDBGCB <laughs> Department of Economic Opportunity pre-application public hearing. Um, this allocation, well, let me do introductions. I'm, I am Marcy Whitaker with the City of Pensacola Housing Department and it's Meredith Reeves with the Neighborhood Enterprise Division with the Scambia County. This um, grant opportunity or this pre-application opportunity came to us through the $5 billion that was originally awarded through the CARES Act to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And the department initially made allocations directly to eligible jurisdictions with the remainder of that funding coming through to the state. And the Department of Economic Opportunity is the department at the state that will be administering the grants for Florida. So the first process or the first step in their process is to make um, a pre-application. And they wanted us to hold a public hearing to gain input from the public as to what the needs would be for the community. So, Meredith, how would you take over for talking about what we can do with these right. funds? Right. So, uh, to go through the alphabet soup, it is Community Development Block Grant Funding, CDBG Coronavirus Funding. So, it is um, specific to preparing, preventing, or responding to coronavirus. So, any proposed project does need to meet that criteria. Um, additionally, because it is HUD CDBG money, it does have to meet a HUD national objective, which would be that you're assisting low or moderate income households or areas, um, prevent or eliminate slumber blight or an urgent need. Um, the guidance that we have gotten from the state really is, is putting more preference with the low mod, um, with general allocations of CDBG, you do need to use 70% of your funding for low mod, so they are very much pushing the low mod, um, as well as the fact that the slum and blight is not necessarily fit in with that coronavirus um, activity um, as well. So we're looking at projects that are going to meet low mod, generally speaking, as we're moving forward. Um, we have been provided with some eligible, typical eligible activities that you can do um, under CDBG. And again, just generally speaking, that would be acquisition, um, public improvements, public facility improvements, um, public services, um, uh, business assistance, and general planning um, projects. Um, and that is just very general. So as long as that meets that national objective and the coronavirus, those are the types of projects that would be eligible. And I'm going to add, yeah. Yeah, and I believe really the key is going to be whatever project we move forward with to tie it to that prepare for, prevent, mm -hmm. or respond to coronavirus. That's really what they're going to be looking for from, all, from both the jurisdictions in our pre-application. Um, they, the funding amounts, the city of Pensacola is eligible to apply for $382,810. Escambia County is eligible to apply for $444,420. And the state used a formula to make those determinations on how they were going to allocate. And that was based on the um, allocations each jurisdiction received in 2020 how many people had made um, application for unemployment benefits, and then they also took a look at the total number of COVID cases as of July 31, 2020. And so that's kind of where they used, pulled their data from to get the formulas as to how they have allocated. Um, the city is looking at using their funding to do an acquisition project. We've been, looking at one of the more hardest hit populations in our community, which is a homeless population. And for years I've heard from homeless service providers that if they had a central location where they could all have like satellite offices, kind of a one-stop shop for the homeless to come to, it would be very beneficial for that population. They could come there and with in one building 
have all their service needs met as opposed to the way it is now in our county there's multiple agencies located throughout the community and quite honestly for the homeless population it's one of their biggest challenges is transportation so if they could go to one facility and get those services that would be great so that's what we're hoping to do is take this money and do an acquisition of a commercial building that would accommodate that we have not identified the building at this point but we're moving toward that I've we've looked at a couple properties but we haven't you know entered into any kind of a sales agreement or any kind of s contract at this point but we're hoping to in the near future if the funding's allocated and for Escambia County's part what we are looking to do is to um, look at existing public facilities so community centers that are in um, areas that serve predominantly low and moderate income households where we're going to do retrofitting of those public buildings to include things such as um, HVAC um, and things to improve the indoor air quality, touchless, you know, entry, um, some of these other things to make our community centers and our health um, centers more resilient to whether the current pandemic or future um, so we're targeting probably, I would say, 10 to 15 properties that are in um, lower or moderate income neighborhoods that that would be um, our priority for this funding. And one of the key things with this funding is the city funds have to be spent within the city's jurisdiction mm -hmm. so that we are limited to the city limits of Pensacola for wherever this building, if, once it's identified, can be purchased. Right. And we, we're going to stay in the unincorporated area. Mm -hmm. um, separately, the town of Century, they are also um, applying for this similar funding, but they will they are having their own separate um, hearings and targeting stuff within the city limits there. And the schedule, it's on a pretty tight time mm -hmm. frame. Like, yes. Real tight. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we've got... Uh, basically it's due on Monday so they just released this last month so we've had a very very quick get up to speed and look at what eligible projects and some of the guidelines for the pre-application um, and the applications will be due on Monday um, and then they'll be reviewing and looking at things like staff capacity um, uh, they'll be expecting us to do our HUD NEPA environmental reviews during this time you know as well as we will have additional public meetings related to that and yeah then the um the final application they said would be due sometime in spring early summer mm -hmm. with them completing the review process in the summer and fall so we're looking at award probably late summer early fall mm -hmm. if we meet all the criteria mm -hmm. we'll open it up to questions right. yes any comments or questions mm -hmm. no okay all right seeing none if there are if anyone does have any comments that they do want to submit later uh, if you have any comments for the counties you can send that um, to NED at myscambia.com if you would send that um, by this Friday the 12th at 5 p.m. and we will make sure that any public comments or questions are incorporated in our submission to the state if you have any comments or questions about the city you can send it to my um, personal email address with the city which is m Whitaker w h i t a k e r at cityofpensacola.com and the same time frame if I could receive those by Friday. Great. Well, we thank you all for your participation, and um, you'll be hearing more from us um, as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you.